I don't know what you're up to, but I'm working. Oh, working? Me too. I heard you got kicked off the force. What I do is I hunt down idiots who jump bail. You are a bounty hunter? Yep. As much as it pains me to say this, I gotta take you to jail. I'm just gonna jump right into it and tell you that this is one of those movies that Hollywood just spreads his ass shits out a turd and they have managed to sell it because they carved the name of some famous actor or actress in it here i would say probably is jennifer aniston well but let's also be honest about the fact that like jennifer aniston's name does not carry the weight that it used to on a turd it does yeah it's true yeah. i mean it's you know it's it's border on a on a who cares and, and then with gerard butler yeah, he's same too thing. new to the scene to have a, a name that carries any weight. The guy has, like I said, his. I think he like picks his movies by like dartboard or something because he certainly didn't put any thought into it. I think at this point, if they had actually put Dog the Bounty Hunter in it, it would have been <laughs> a bigger draw. Well, that's the thing. You know, you make him a bounty hunter. You think they would have like some actual bounty hunter stuff? Yeah. Just, just, just to just to throw it in there to make it somewhat interesting. God, oh wait. Yeah. This movie has nothing interesting. That would have been inconsistent. I, I noticed I came in really calm into this review. And fuck this movie, man. This movie pissed me off for a little while. And then it just kind of, I, I don't know, just made me loopy to where I was just cracking up at just nothing in the film. You but were. You, you should have seen this. You should have been me, Spill listeners, because I was sitting back there with probably like a horrible rictus of a scowl off etched into my face and on either side of me these two guys are shaking <laughs> laughing and, and like and rocking in their seats and grabbing the rail in front of them and shaking it and making little scary noises and i'm like what the hell they can't actually like this movie no they don't they are hysterical I, I, really, <laughs> well, I, yeah I, I, honestly yeah i was just it, it was excruciating I mean, I tried to sleep to just to just to get out of it. I wasn't even tired. I was like, I, I, I mentally cannot be here. I was another. If that movie had been another thirty minutes, I, they would have found me like the girl in the beginning of the ring. <laughs> yeah, oh no. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, well, all of us. Well, I, you should have seen it. I was sitting up there just laughing deliriously. You were sitting up there just staring. And you just had your head in your hands like somebody had just died, or you were just like caught in a concentration camp or something. I mean, you that, you were pitiful. That that's really how I felt. I mean, I'm like, you know what? I I wish this movie was was stupid, it, it, it just like just zany stupid in a way that I don't like. Because at least it would have done something. But, but it would have had so a goddamn pulse. boring. Hey, that's what I mean. <laughs> like nothing's going on. And I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm mad, I'm mad at y'all. Not you, not you guys, but spill listeners out there. I mean, what the fuck you want from me? You know what I'm telling you about this movie? I mean, we see this kind of shit all the time. I don't know what to tell you at this point. Except this, this shit, this shit is the kind of filmmaking that I absolutely hate. I was mad at you. I turned to hit Corey and went. Fuck you for making me into a film critic 10 years ago. <laughs> and I, looked, I got up and looked at you and I said, hey, baby, you knew the game before you got into it. <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah. This is, the, this is the most cynical, bland form of Hollywood filmmaking that you can get. They take the soundtrack. They take a disc of pre-recorded music that they've had lying around for two decades and slap it onto this film. If they're not playing that, they'll just putting on the latest pop songs that are in the top 20 of the Billboard charts. You got these guys who have nothing to do. There's no plot. The movie's just an excuse for them to fight and bicker through the whole thing. Except when it works in other movies here, not only do you not believe that these two people are married, so there's no chemistry between them, but you hate them. I mean, they're the kind of people, they lead people on. They steal cars. They steal little pedicabs. They, they tear up property at hotels. And most of all, they don't tip. Yeah, there's more <laughs> chemistry going on at, at Bible school. Seriously, it's just like there's nothing. There's nothing. It was almost like they weren't even in the same room together. You notice? They wouldn't even look at each other. Rarely does the camera even show them in th the same shot when they're talking to each other. Like, what? I get the feeling those actors couldn't stand each other. You know other. what? I was just thinking that myself. Like, they, they hated each other, and it was every day it was just, let's get through this. Yeah. Because they, like, yeah, and the premise is, okay, they're exes, and they, they, they can't stand each other. They made each other crazy. And yet, we're never shown why. It's like they, they argue just because there's nothing else to do. Like, they're just such nothings of personality that, like, well, we'll just yell, and that'll make us feel like something. They came up with this plot just so that they could get a name actor to it. They said, you know what, this is, I don't know what Hollywood does. This is a movie that's so cheap it'll make money except for the actors that we have to pay. It's a tax write-off. This is kind of film that makes stupid people feel smart because it's so predictable. I don't know why it's made, but... This, is, this is how this is made. They, they go, like, okay, Sandra Bullock, uh, Jennifer 
Jennifer Aniston, uh, Jennifer Lopez, these are our romantic women lead. They get women into the theater. Now, all we got to do is just spin the wheel of leading men and get somebody in here. Gerard Butler's agent says, okay, look, you did good in 300. Now we want to make you a leading man. So to, to do this, we got to have you in some romantic comedies, which is all he's been doing lately. And this is his name came up. His agent fought for him and got him in this. And it could have been anybody in that role. And they got to put him in a role where he has to take his shirt off. He plays a bounty hunter in a movie who finds out that his ex-wife is his next target. I mean, it's almost done as some kind of joke. And he wants to do it because he wants revenge on this, yeah, he this woman. He can, yeah, he considers like a real bitch. However, she's caught up in something bigger. So while he's going after her, there's some real dangerous guys chasing both of them. And really, that doesn't. It, who gives a shit after a while? You well, know. You, you know when you say it like that, it sounds like it could be something. I know I've seen movies with a similar plot before that did work. It's just that like this big story that she's after. She's she's playing Lois Lane. Uh, you know, from the Lois Lane School of Journalism, where they way overpay their journalists. She's wearing clothes she could never afford. And that, lives in an apartment she can never afford. Never yeah. afford. And she walks around. Her her whole style of, of journalism is to just wear tight skirts, really high heels, and find some schmo on the streets to do all the work for her. but the story when it when it comes down to it, it's like that's not that big of a story i'm sorry no it really isn't and there's not enough to go on for her to be as excited about it as she is in fact the story has that part of it like the actual i suppose there's a plot going on there i mean did they ever even say what the actual crime was that had been committed because i don't think they did it just gets I, lost and there's we slept through that where, part well no i see i didn't actually <laughs> fall asleep i was in too much physical pain to fall asleep at that point it was like a toothache that wouldn't go away let me fall into dreamland there was a point that they're chasing down this character right that they just kind of stumble upon anyway who's like running from oh god oh god and they catch him what do you know what do you know and they're having to torture him to get the information out and nothing he's just a caddy who overheard him some shit at the club who happens to know where yeah. this other guy works and here's how the movie plays out here's how predictable it is when they're on that golf course what happens next of course you get a wacky chase scene with a golf cart. Jennifer Aniston is running after people in a golf cart, and, and some, they fall into a pond. And somebody's got to run in front of a bunch of people hitting golf yep. balls who, of course, don't look up before they hit their golf it balls. It never stops swinging either. Oh, no, no. Well, that's because they're a bunch of country club assholes who couldn't be bothered <laughs> no, no, no. to not hit people. It wasn't, with... it wasn't a black man running in front of them. <laughs> no, it was worse. It was Gerard Butler. Yeah, that's, exactly. what, that's what they're like. Oh, look, it's Gerard Butler. <laughs> well, he looks Hispanic from a distance. <laughs> I mean, if you get the right two people together and maybe someone who, like, says, okay, I know that this is bullshit, but I'm going to try to make something out of this plot, you could actually have something that's funny because nobody cares. We've seen everything before. We're not trying to, like, talk about this movie because it's just so trite. But here, I, you can't tell what's happening. And really, they are trying to fill space, and they're filling the space with shit that is just not funny. I get the feeling that... Jennifer Aniston knew exactly what she was doing. She's like, look, I know I'm fine as hell. People come see me no matter what. I'm getting some money. I think Gerard Butler was the one who's coming on the set and trying to make something out of this shit. And she's like, will you will just settle down, okay? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, do, you, do you realize you want some bullshit? We got to talk about this. Bye. What do you want to say? I'm not letting you take me to jail. Duly noted. And I'm no! Oh, Michael! Oh, my you have got to be kidding me! You got to be kidding me! Shoot out! Milo, stop it! Seriously, put me down! Milo! Ah! You cannot be putting me in a trunk! You cannot be staring! I'm dead, Siri. He looks like he smells bad. I'm sorry. Every time I watch him now, I'm like, dude, take a shower. I can. Well, well he just needs to shave. Is yeah. What, what well, is. yeah. The, you know what? I think I bet you anything. If he shaved, he would just look like a total dork. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and everyone would be like, oh my god, really? <laughs> so he's never. He has never shaved. It, it's funny because this is that that movie where you go like, I bet all the funny stuff's in a trailer. Only if you watch that trailer, there's nothing funny in it. No, and it just gets worse. From and that. yet, all the funny stuff's in the trailer. You know, we haven't yeah. even talked about the wacky side side plot of Which the one? of the sexual harassment suit oh, in the making. Man, it's such a waste like, of Jason Sudeikis the, in this the, movie. Like a coworker who is just flat out scary stalking her, but the movie chooses to go. What? Why? Isn't it goofy? Well, she's the one who's admitting to everybody at work. Oh yeah, I made out. I made out with him at the Christmas party. I'm like, oh, that's a trip to HR and and fired. 
Jason <laughs> Sudeikis, what has he been in? He's on oh, 30 Rock? He, 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 he's, in, he's on Saturday Night Live. He's like one of, like, like almost the main guy of Saturday Night Live. Uh, yeah, he's been on 30 Rock. He's been in a lot of movies. You know, because <clears throat> I, I know it's he's not He's really him. funny. I know it's not him. I, I always got him mixed up with the gay guy on Reno 911. Oh, with Thomas Lennon? What's his name? The one that's always on the, in the in the biker show. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Lieutenant Dangle. No, 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 not him. The the guy that's always they, they, they he's always appearing on roller skates. And... Oh, 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 uh, Nick Swartzen. Yeah, I always thought yeah. that he was the gay dude in Reno 911. No, no, the other gay dude. Right, right. <laughs> so that's not him. Okay. No, no. You sure? Put some tight pants on. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is, it's a waste of a lot of people in here. I mean, we make fun of Gerard Butler, but I like Gerard Butler. I think that he's From just. From what? <laughs> What did he do that just made you go, you know what, I like this guy. He's got that thing. I do not have time to look this up on IMDb right now, but he's he on something. an episode of uh, SNL that was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. Even Garth Brooks was funny on Saturday Night Live. And notice know. I kept sitting up and saying, don't say 300. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You, you know, but you bring up a good point because Gerard Butler is still carrying that from 300. Where he would go like, oh, yeah, I like that guy. I like that guy. But if you hold him down and say, like, from what? Yeah. They're going to all go, uh... Yeah, and even in 300, it wasn't even really him. No, I mean, no, it was, it was like all CGI. Was CG. Yeah. Even his muscles were CG'd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, come on. Really? You watched... Yeah, that's when you think about 300, what you liked about it. You go, oh, yeah, it was Gerard Butler all the way. He carried that film. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. That's <laughs> not why you liked that movie. You he... liked it because you, you're probably a little gay. Wait, come on. <laughs> He did. He did great voice acting in Tales of the Black Freighter. You know, <laughs> is that all you got? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say Nims Island. Or P.S. I love you. <laughs> hey, was that him in uh, How to Train Your Dragon? You're looking on the IMDb. Oh, yes, it was. Okay, he's, he's 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 good in that. Was he a dragon? Because he looks like a dragon no, no, in real no, no, life. No, no, he's he's the uh, he's the main Viking. Okay. All right. No. Okay. No. Well, see, there you go. He's all right when he's doing hey, cartoons. Doing some cartoons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, see, if we get the Gerard Butler Saturday morning cartoon show, then we'd love this guy. No, he's. Uh, I. I. Let me just say this. What a talented I, performer Gerard Butler plausibly is. I do think. <laughs> I, I. I can. I can. The he kids. Sounds talented. The, the kids got moxie. I can tell it now. I can. Tell, he's got potential, and he's gonna do something great. You laugh now, but you just wait. You all just right. wait. I'm uh, waiting. I've uh, been waiting. And, and look. You know Jennifer Aniston. I say what you will, but she looks hot. You know, I had nothing else. I had. I, I was staring at her ass throughout most of the movie. Yes, you know what? A, a movie like this makes you sexist, okay? Because when there's nothing else going on, you are gonna look at a chick's tits and ass. Well, no, that's uh, pro- true. Probably, probably, probably part of the reason. You See, stand- you can't even say because you're thinking about that <laughs> ass right now. Oh, bye bye, bye bye. You're staring at her ass so much because the camera was up at half the time. Yeah, it was. I mean, re- they, they really went out the of their way to like go like, look how sexy she is. I love the fact like, that like she gets into a. This is the thing about her character though she's not even sexy on one level because you're like going yeah she's hot and then she acts like such a cunt all that the, you're wow. just like wow. you, you, you went there, dude. <laughs> i'm sorry she, she's the very definition of one of this movie i'm like what are we supposed to like about this girl there's a part she, where she just, gets into a pedicab and tells the guy oh you know i don't actually have any money um do you mind like uh, just give me the ride anyway he's like yeah, you know what why don't you just flash me your tits and we'll call it even okay maybe kind of a douche thing to say <laughs> But it was kind of a douche thing to get into a pedicab without money. <laughs> are you, are you, and that's the thing. You, you she wonder, steals his pedicab. Yeah, you wonder why she's wanted by the law. Because the bitch yeah. steals everything she comes across. In yeah, fact, both does. of them steal. Why is he a bounty hunter? He's also the worst fucking bounty hunter out there. I can yes, see why he, he in the movie they say he was fired as a cop. It's like, yeah, I can see why. Because he's a bungler. He goes after like a guy in the middle of a parade on stilts who's in an Uncle Sam costume. It's like, you couldn't wait for the parade I, oh, to be over? Oh, oh, I know. Well, well I, I will say this. And if I'm going to give this movie any credit, I can't believe I'm doing this like they say he was a cop and he got fired off his job for negligence and they don't wrap it back around to where he got framed and somebody else set him up because he's really a good guy i think they just forgot like i said <laughs> like i said they never even explained the crime itself oh yeah the, the core like plot thing of the movie other than oh will they get back together well duh they never even explain what the crime was really like, wait what just uh, uh, okay so why did we even watch that freaking movie yeah. something will be haunting me till the day i die uh, i can't all i it. need is two more hours i shouldn't have gone to see that fucking movie <laughs> uh, who was the who who were the 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 bookies in the movie, it was uh, who, the, the, the woman. Yeah, who was that? Uh, her woman? name is uh, Kathy. Fuck, what's her name? She's very familiar because she, she she was uh, she was um, the the girlfriend in, in, in Raging Bull. Bull. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 
uh, damn, I cannot remember she's, her name. She has put on some weight since then. Oh, yeah. Shit, dude, that was like <laughs> yeah, she 35 was, years ago. I know. She looks like a raging bull now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't do her? Cool. <laughs> I didn't say that now, you know? <laughs> but I'm just saying. Having you know, actually had sex with a bull, Corey meant it as a compliment. <laughs> and Kat, oh, that's raging, it. yo. Kathy Moriarty. Moriarty, that's right. Yeah, yeah. no, she, her plot line where they would going after Gerard Butler because he owed them money. At the end of the movie, it was almost like the, the director and the writers themselves said, you know what, this is enough bullshit for people. Let's not, <laughs> we, we won't worry about that plot anymore. Well, you know, I think that when you owe bookies several thousand dollars, there comes a point when, they, when you haven't paid it back and they go like, ah, oh, well... Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> and that's another thing. It's like the movie's like, okay, like these guys aren't even evil bookies, really. They're no. being pretty reasonable <laughs> as bookies go. Right. And Gerard Butler's attitude about the whole thing is like, why would I pay you back? You know, like, right. You're a scumbag bookie. Why should I pay you? You <laughs> yeah. gambled, you asshole. Yeah. What do you think was going to happen when you borrow money from somebody? Because then they say like like two months went by and he, didn't, he made no payments at yeah. all. That's what I'm saying. He sucks at whatever he does. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's and he, plus he's breaking the law himself. Damn, that camera was all off in Jennifer Aniston's. Oh head. yeah, it, it almost gave her a high colonic. That shit was so far <laughs> up there. Much. We almost saw her colon. That camera was so far <laughs> up her ass. But which hey, look, it was hot though. I mean, Jennifer Aniston is. I, I wonder why she's doing this. I mean, she is above doing some shit like this is at this she point anymore though. I, I mean, I mean, really, she makes bad choices. Yeah, it, that's true. Uh, you know, the other alternative is for her to be on Cougar Town. So that's yeah. not, that wouldn't really be a step I guess, up either. Yeah, I guess you take off the cover of People Magazine off the set of Friends. She just lost as a motherfucker. Don't I, know what I, to I do. I do like how all our movies are about how guys are breaking up with her. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, in movies and in real life, just can't keep a man. Can't hey, you, is she trying to say something? <laughs> 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 and I have to say, this movie, you could tell how this how safe this movie is trying to be. And what I mean by safe, I mean by I mean shitty. I mean it's one of those scripts. <laughs> yeah, well, because it is, it is one of those scripts where they're just saying we know that this is trash, but it's the trash that a lot of people are gonna like because, like I said, it makes feel people feel it makes them feel smart or it's just an easy laugh. People I mean, like to, some people go see movies because they already want to know what's gonna happen. They want to go into it with the expectation of how it's gonna play out because, yeah, as you said, it feels safe that way. There's not any surprises. They can go through go. Yeah, it's the same reason people like sitcoms for so long, sure. like the old school. It was the same episode every goddamn week at, on three's company but people still tuned in every week i know i did when i was 12 i mean yeah <laughs> and, you, and you know something you're right about that and it does that to the point where you know what for the people who are responsible for bullshit like this uh that 60 year old grandmother the one decent thing i can say about this movie is baby it's safe for you i mean there's th th it's violent but no one gets killed in a violent way all the mob violence and the and the crime violence is comic i mean they do not want to kill anyone in this movie because they want like the like they want as many people in the lowest common denominator of people who come see this audience to come see this and not be offended and tell their people like oh yeah you can bring anybody to this because it won't be that They'll offensive say, oh it was fun it, it also teaches you that if your husband did used to like throw you to the ground or lock you in a trunk he just did it because he loved you. Yep. No, don't, don't, don't see him as a bad guy. Yeah. yeah. I, I really hate the put movie. Put yourself in his shoes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really hate the message this movie is sending out because it makes it seem like, oh, you know, if I want to abuse my wife, I just become a bounty hunter. <laughs> you know? Oh, you know, I got a safe outlet right here. Well, she does actually have to jump bail first. That's kind of an important. Ah, you can't those are, just those go are around. Details. Yeah. You can't go around throwing her. In, I'm a bounty hunter now, bitch, and throwing the trunk when she didn't actually do anything. I mean, that's all you gotta do. Can't you see the? the I mean, it's sad, but I can see the husband showing up at the at the precinct, you know, with a black. Eye, tooth missing, bloody lip. She tried to run. <laughs> she tried to jump bail. No, I just shut up. <laughs> but man, what? I mean, really, I, I feel kind of stupid even going on so long for this. The people who's gonna see this movie, they're gonna see it and they're gonna have a good time. And nothing we can say is gonna change that for you. You're gonna like it because it's just that kind of movie. Well, for I you. hope the theater catches on fire while those people are watching this movie. <laughs> and and Leon will be there with chains locking the doors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm doing this for the greater good of humanity. Yeah. But wow, well, maybe, yeah. maybe if that happens all across the country, all across Texas at least, we get some textbooks that are historically <laughs> accurate. But other than that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you have any appreciation for film whatsoever, if you appreciate things like plot, story devices that make sense, good acting, I, anything, I, this is this, you're gonna look at this and say this is trash. We saw a woman come out tonight who I know just by looking at her, she's the kind of woman to go see these kind of movies and come out and be like, oh, "I was cute." She came out and said. That was the big stinky. Yeah, she does, yeah, that yeah, movie she said, still stinks out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's the thing, though, is that that's where I disagree with you, because that woman and several other people I saw coming out who are totally the target audience for this movie and usually like these kind of things, 
didn't really like it because yeah. they're not, you know, there are a lot of things, but they're not complete idiots. They can tell when these two actors don't even like being on screen together. And there was nothing there to enjoy. And you know what? You're right. This might be that rare film that comes out every now and then where you think it's for that audience. And even that audience who don't discriminate against anything comes out and says, that was some shitty shit. I don't think it's all that rare. I think it happens quite a bit. Yeah, yeah maybe we're just like, I will admit, maybe we're just kind of jaded now to where we look, uh, yeah, maybe we're a little snobbish now. We look down on people. We blame them for these kind of movies, but, but they're not lot, that bad. A lot bad. of these movies come out and we go like, oh, I'm sure it'll, it'll do well. And then they don't. They yeah. debut at number eight, and then they disappear. We never see them again. And I think this will be one of those movies. I mean, the, the worst thing about this is they're not even ballsy enough to try anything that I can hate in it. Right. It's just so, as you said, completely inoffensive that it's completely dull. There's absolutely nothing of worth here at all. And in and of itself, that makes it even worse than a film you know, that would try hard, hard and fail. Yeah. yeah. To, to me, it was. It, yeah, I I agree with you. It was one one of those movies that came in early and ranked as a as a some old bullshit, and I just wanted it to do something, to just just one really offensive thing, so I could go. Oh, I'm, I I can't wait to get this to fuck you, and it didn't have the balls to do it. No, it's it, it, it's almost offensive, and it's how safe it is. But man, yeah, what, what hey people, yeah, you you know what we're gonna say is this some bullshit. Yep. I'm going to go so far as call it a fuck you, actually. Really? I will because of what I just said. I was like, you know what? It's because... Uh, you know what? They, I knew if one of us was, was going to do it, it would be it's you. It's because they didn't... <laughs> it's because they literally didn't try. There was no effort in this film at all. It is a complete waste of celluloid. There's not one entertaining moment in this entire film. Dude, I agree And I say you. fuck you to the people who paid for this. I say fuck you to the actors for deciding to be in it. And an extra special fuck you to the director and writer who... God, you, know, you should have known better. Really? You should have known better. And you're just making the world an ugly place. Right now, you look at you and like not for this fat check bitch <laughs> <laughs> well, let, you know i was trying to look up the uh, director a little while ago i, yeah. I don't think it's anybody who, who that directed we, this bullshit andy tennant who uh let's see what he's done before he, uh sweet home alabama he did hitch oh, that's uh, what it was from the director of hitch that's what they kept saying that's who the, and that's why i was surprised at how bad this was yeah because hitch yeah. is actually kind of a cute movie oh yeah hitch is good oh wait a minute wait a minute here's he did one that we despise fool's gold Oh, oh. despise that. Oh, this guy, this guy, so this public guy enemy got, number one here. He just got lucky. Well, Hitch had the advantage of one Will Smith, who even in his worst is still pretty fucking charming, and a decent script, yeah. you know, because it really did have a pretty de decent script. Obviously, the director doesn't have the ability to turn a mediocre script into something that's worth watching. No, it really relies on the actors and actresses. And like I said here, these people, we don't know what's going on with them, but they got nothing. They got zero together. On Jennifer the Aniston pretty much plays the same person all the time. And she's always – she never seems like, like a fun person. I've never seen her in something where I'm like – Man, you know, outside of her being hot, she'd be a fun girlfriend to have. Yeah, no, I she, never get that feeling. Yeah, she'd her. be like, she'd be that girlfriend who would be like scowling that you hang out with your friends too much, and and you don't do want to do the stuff she wants Come to do. Drag you out of the strip club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. explains a lot. <laughs> uh, hey Jennifer, I hear they're hiring at Cougar Town. <laughs> Better oh. hurry up, right? <laughs> yeah, because it ain't gonna be on that much longer. Yeah, Desperate Housewives <laughs> is gonna be wrapping up soon, and those slots are gonna get filled. Now, literally, I will say this: I did have a good time in this movie, thanks to that dude that was in the back. I swear that there was a guy who was in the back, who was wearing a top hat and had a big, long, snidely whip, whiplash mustache because there was one guy in the theater who was who, laughing. Who was, and, and when he laughed, it wasn't just a laugh. It was... <laughs> well, well, maybe that was somebody who was... Like, he set this up to torture the audience. <laughs> like, like, I, like, we were all tied to the railroad track watching that movie. Yeah, this was so yeah. strange sounding. I thought someone was turning into a werewolf back there. <laughs> what the hell? He had this scatter shot like like laugh like that oh, oh, oh. what the fuck was that actually guy? <laughs> you know what i think he might be right leon might be right i think that guy actually saw us suffering in the front row and he's like oh, my plan is working <laughs> well he's got a big white cat on his lap and he's all bald. <laughs> so my nemesis at spill.com it, it, it was come on ass. <laughs> I will bring them down. <laughs> there was even one part where I looked over at Leon, and he had his hands in his hand. He was just breaking down. And, I, and the guy, you guys, you know I'm telling the truth here. You heard in the background, ha! <laughs> And that's when I had to laugh. It was the only laugh I got in the that's, theater the yeah, whole time. Yeah. yeah, I tell you, Come On Ass took his life savings <laughs> to produce this movie. <laughs> just so we would have to sit through it. And you know what? He broke you guys. Yeah. Y'all were totally broken. Actually, I think we got him because I bet, like, right after all the credits rolled, 
it said fuck you spill.com but, but by that <laughs> but, point but we, we were gone and gone. he was like do for it again she made you miserable not as miserable as i'm gonna make her <laughs> <laughs>